So guess what I was up to today? I gamified my evening, kind of, and it turned out to be a fun project. You remember my favorite digital space in VR that we keep talking about? I have this teeny tiny model of it, all crafted and shaped, sitting right here on my table. Yep, all thanks to Ivy. The ever-enthusiastic workshop conductor who keeps suggesting these cool ideas which blend tech and art. Oh, and you know what's even better? I've filmed a time-lapse of the whole process. I'm thinking about sharing it on Twitch, fresh content, right? Eric was joking about me getting Twitch famous and forgetting them. As if, right? You know you'd always be my VIP, but let's talk about the project itself. The whole process of converting VR into reality, it was like... Inception, as Eric rightly pointed out. It's a little bit of the metaverse, my own personal metaverse at home. I feel like in my own way, I've brought about a perfect blend of tech and art, which is the way to go, you know? Funny Nina mentioned that it doesn't involve drones crashing into trees this time. For the record, no trees were harmed in the process. Believe it or not, it was a super cozy evening, just indulging in this DIY project and seeing it turn out exactly how I envisioned. Do I see a future in miniature model making? Maybe, maybe not. But it surely was a break from my regular digital universe and gave me an entirely different perspective. It was quite reassuring to know that even in this heavy tech-savvy world, there are things that you can create with your hands. I mean, who knew a VR environment could be crouched down to such a smaller scale, right? Although the painting part is yet due. And trust me, coloring a 3D model is no stroll in the park. By now, you'd think I'd have learned the art of patience from those bonsai trimming sessions, but let's see how it goes. Oh, and before I go, remember how we were hunting for that VR-compatible headset for your little brother? Found this one online today with some good reviews, so thought you might want to check it out. And as much as I'd love to ramble on, this little piece of metaverse is calling out to me. Well, it won't paint itself now, would it? I'll get back to you once it's all done. So I had such an intense gaming session today. I dove into this new indie detective VR game, and trust me, it's mind-blowing. It's loaded with complex puzzles that are easily some of the most challenging I've ever encountered in a VR experience. I streamed the whole thing on Twitch with Lily and Dakota joining in. Lily being a pro streamer herself, sailed through some of the puzzles like it was nothing. She definitely amped up the fun quotient with her usual witty comments, and surprisingly, so did Dakota. And speaking of Dakota, you remember him, right? Our dear game developer with an ego the size of a mountain. He would keep throwing these subtle jabs at me whenever something took me longer to figure out. Honestly, today it felt like he was more focused on trying to one-up me, rather than helping to solve the puzzles. That Dakota. I mean, how competitive can you get? Though I must admit it did add some extra zing to the whole live streaming session, in our chat group today, we decided to have a gaming night next weekend. It's been a while since we've done something like this. Oh, and yes, I've declared myself the official pizza and coke supplier for the night. Actually, this whole idea got more hyped up when I suggested we should invite Lily and Dakota also. It wasn't long before Eric coined it a mini-streamer convention, and the idea kind of stuck. I'm super excited about it, and can't wait to see what chaos we create together with Eric's crazy gaming skills and Dakota's eccentric game reviews. But behind all this fun and banter, there's this one thing that's been buzzing in my mind. It's fascinating and a bit overwhelming how rapidly AI has advanced in recent years. Remember Nina's new project about pattern recognition? It got me thinking that we're in an era where technology is not just part of our lives, but shaping the way we think and interact. Anyway, enough of my rambling. As they say, the game must go on. There are still a ton of puzzles waiting for me. You won't believe the roller coaster of a ride I had today. I found myself immersed in an entire festival, right from the cozy confines of my room. Yes, a full-blown cultural fest, but not the kind you'd think. It was a virtual reality cultural fest, can you imagine that? It was a mind-boggling fusion of traditional and digital art. I've been in awe of digital art combined with cultural histories, and today was a textbook example of it. 
I mean, there I was, feeling euphoric stepping into a digital world, exploring traditional art forms reimagined in the VR space. I felt like a digital tourist, meeting Sophie, this rad virtual chef who was recreating international cuisines in her VR kitchen. And then there was Sophia, a cultural guide who spoke about Colombian mural art and how it tells a vibrant cultural narrative. It was all so surreal, even by VR standards. I felt like I was traveling the world, diving deep into cultural heritage and coming out the other side enlightened, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, it's all been documented, and I'm thinking of hosting a VR live stream. Eric and Nina are already on board, and they're already planning their VR setups. So here's the fun part. You ready for this? I'm planning to invite Sophie and Sophia to the stream. Yep, Sophie with her haptic tech cooking, and Sophia with her art tours, right on my Twitch stream. How wild is that gonna be? Though, as much as I'd love to bask in the digital glow of my VR festival experience and chat, I need to get back to designing a VR environment inspired by today's cultural exuberance. I'll also need to prep some stuff for the impending Twitch madness, so stay tuned as this artist ventures back into the throbbing digital heartland.